High Room 15. This is chapter 15 in the cage of Secret of Nim. Mrs. Frisbee said, but why did they want to catch you? And how did you ever get away again? At first, said Nicodemus, I thought it must be because they didn't like steal our stealing the food. And yet you could hardly even call it stealing. It was waste food. And all they did was, was, was haul it away and put it in the city incinerator. So what harm is it if we eat some of it? Of course, there are people who just dislike rats, whether you're, they're not doing any harm or not. And mice too, said Mrs. Frisbee. True, said Nicodemus, though not as so much as rats, I think. Anyway, that wasn't the reason at all. But what the real reason was, I didn't find out for a while. As to getting away, that too didn't happen until much later. Now I, fi I was firmly and inextric inextricably, it's a hard word, caught, snared in the net and helpless, Nicodemus continued. When the man who held it saw that he had four rats, he pulled a drawstring that closed it up. He put the net down and picked up another, an empty one. He moved on into the square, leaving us to lie there. I tried gnawing my way out, but the strands were made of some kind of plastic as hard as wire. The noise and movement began to die down eventually. I suppose the rats in the square had all either been caught or had escaped. I heard one man call to the other. I guess that's a lot. Someone else was turning a light this way and that, searching the rest of the market area. Not a one to be seen. We could hide and wait for another wave. There won't be another wave, not tonight. Probably not for four or five nights. Word gets around. You mean they communicate, a third voice said. You bet they communicate. And the next time they do come, you can be sure that they'll case the place carefully. We were lucky. These rats hadn't been bothered for years. They'd grown careless. How many did the labor order? How many did the lab order? Excuse me. Someone was turning out the lights, on the lights, out the lights on at the time. Five dozen. How many have we got? Mm, about that, maybe more. Let's load the truck. In a minute or so, I felt myself being lifted up and swinging back and forth in the net. I was carried with my three companions to the white truck I had seen earlier. Its back doors were open, and it was lighted inside. I could see that its whole interior was a large wire cage. Into this, our net was thrust. The man then opened the drawstring, and we were dumped onto the floor, which was covered with sawdust. The other nets were emptied out at the same way, and in a few minutes, there was a good-sized crowd of us on the floor, all more or less dazed, and all, as if I was typical, terrified. The cage was locked, the doors clanged shut, and the lights went out. I heard the truck motor start. A second later, the floor lurched beneath us. We were moving. Where were they taking us? For what purpose? Then in the dark, I heard a voice beside me. Nicodemus? It was Jenner. You can imagine how glad I was to hear him, but I was sorry too. Jenner, I thought maybe you got away. I was in the last net. I thought I saw you across the floor. Where are we going? I don't know. What's a lab? A laboratory? Yes, but what is it? I don't know. I've just heard the word somewhere. Well, I think that's where we're going, whatever it is. The truck rumbled along through the dark, over bumpy streets at first, then at higher speed, over a smooth highway. There were no windows in the back, so it was impossible to see where we were actually going. Not that I would have known anyway, never before having been more than a half a dozen blocks away from my house. I think we drove for about two hours, but it might have been less before the truck slowed and turned and finally came to a stop. The back doors were opened again, and through the wire wall of the cage, I saw that they had come that we had come to a building, very modern, of white cement and glass. It was square and big, about ten stories tall. Night had fallen, and most of its windows were dark, but the platform to which our truck drove us was lighted, and there were people waiting for us. A door opened, and three men came out. One of them pushed a cart, a hand truck piled with some small with small wire cages. The man beside him was dressed in a heavy coat, boots, and thick leather gloves. The third man wore heavy horn-rimmed glasses and a white coat. He was obviously the leader. The man from the truck, the ones who had caught us, now joined the men from the building. How many did you get? asked the man in the white coat. Hard to count. They keep moving around. But I make it between 60 and 70. Good. Any trouble? No, it was easy. They almost acted tame. I hope not. I've got enough tame ones. Oh, they're lively enough, and they look healthy. Let's get them out. The man with the gloves and the boots then donned a wire face mask as well and climbed in among us. He opened a small sliding trap door at the back of the cage. A man outside held one of the small cages up to the opening, and one at a time, we were pushed into the individual little prisons. A few of the rats snarled and bit, tried to bite. I did not, and neither did Jenner. It was, it was too obviously futile. When it was finished, the man in the white coat said, 63, good work. A man from the truck said, thanks, Dr. Schultz. 
and we were racked on the hand truck and wheeled into the building. Dr. Schultz, I did not know it then, but I was to be his prisoner and his pupil for the next three years. We spent the rest of that night in a long white room. It was in fact a laboratory with a lot of equipment at one end that I didn't understand at all then. Bottles and shiny metal things and black boxes with wires trailing from them. But our end held only rows of cages on shelves, each cage with a tag on it, and each separated from its neighbors by wooden partitions on both sides. Someone came around with a stack of small jars and fastened one to my cage. A little pipe led through the bars like a sipping straw, drinking water. Then the lights were dimmed and we were left alone. That cage was my home for a long time. It was not uncomfortable. It had a floor of some kind of plastic, medium soft and warm to the touch, with wire walls and ceiling. It was airy enough. Yet just the fact that it was a cage made it horrible. I, who had always run where I wanted, could, could go three hops forward, three hops back again, and that was all. But the worst was that dreadful feeling. I know we all had it, that we were completely at the mercy of someone we knew not at all, for some purpose we could not guess. What were their plans for us? As it turned out, the uncertainty itself was the worst suffering we had to undergo. We were treated well enough, except for some very small, very quick flashes of pain, which were a part of our training. And we were always well fed, though the food, scientifically compiled pellets, was not what you call delicious. But of course, we didn't know that when we were arrived, and I doubt that any of us got much sleep that first night. I know I didn't. So, in a way, it was a relief when early the next morning the lights snapped on and Dr. Schultz entered. There was two other men, two other people with him, a young man and a young woman. Like him, they were dressed in white laboratory coats. He was talking to them as they entered the room and walked toward our cages. Three groups, 20 for training on injection series A, 20 for series B. That will leave 23 for the control group. They get no injections at all except to keep the test exactly even. We will prick them with the plain needle, a plain needle. Let's call the groups A, B, and C for control. Tag them the number A through 1 through A through 20, and B, th B1 through B20, and so on. Number the cages the same way, and keep each rat in the same cage throughout. Diet will be the same for all. When do we start the injections? As soon as we're through the, with the tagging, we'll do that now. George, you number the tags in the cages. Julie, you tie them on. I'll hold. So the young woman's name was Julie. The young man was George. They all put gloves on, long, tough plastic ones that came to their elbows. One by one, we were taken from our cages, held gently but firmly by Dr. Schultz, while Julie fastened around each of our necks a narrow ribbon of a yellow plastic bearing a number. I learned eventually that my number was A10. They were kind, especially Julie. I remember the way, excuse me, I remember that one rat was being tagged. She looked at it and said, poor little thing, he's frightened. Look how he's trembling. What kind of biologist are you, said Dr. Schultz. The poor little thing is a she, not a he. Then my turn came. The door of my cage slid open just enough for Dr. Schultz to put his gloved hand through. I cowered in the back of the cage, which was what just what he expected me to do. One hand pressed flat against the wire wall, then his fingers gripped my shoulders. The other hand held my head just behind the ears, and I was powerless. I was lifted from the cage and felt the plastic collar clipped around my neck. I was back inside with the door closed in less than a minute. The collar was, too, was not tight, but by no amount of tugging, twisting, or shaking was I able to get it off. I watched through the wire front of my cage as the others were caught and tagged. About six cages down from me, on the same shelf, I saw them put a collar on Jenner. But once he was back in his cage, I could no longer see him. A little later, in the morning, they came around again, this time pushing a table on wheels. It was loaded with a bottle of some clear liquid, a long rack of sharp needles, and a plunger. Once more, I was lifted from the cage. This time, George did the holding while Dr. Schultz fastened one of the needles to the plunger. I felt a sharp pain in my hip, then it was over. We all got used to that, for from then on we got injections at least twice a week. What they were injected and why? I did not know. Yet for the 20 of us, those injections were to change our whole lives. All right, next up is chapter 16.